What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 67 of the Stand Up Guys podcast. I'm your host, the incomparable Zach Jones, joined as always by the Eros to my Aunt Eros, Lester Jones. Uh, maybe it's time to quit. Eros? <laughs> hey. <laughs> I feel like I've heard it before. I don't know what that <clears throat> is, but. Some, some mythological brothers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm excited about this intro. The new one. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll see if you're still saying that. <laughs> we got the ninth wonder, Chocolate Thunder, looking for a few good peepees for a few good DPs. <laughs> the tag teaming, double creaming. You take the. Fr- but he'll take the back. You'll be dancing all night, sack to sack. The phenomenal <laughs> AJ. I don't know. That was pretty good. <laughs> I mean, uh, I think some of your work has been better before, but uh, I don't mind it. Not too bad. Not too shabby. <laughs> well, I, I had to give you a break from eating all that ass. You know? <laughs> I'm still getting some ass in this situation. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. What you guys been doing this week? Anything good? Man, uh, I watched a show on HBO called uh, Southside. Southside. HBO Max. Okay, what's that about? It's about uh, two dudes who, like, graduate from community college and have these, like, lofty goals. <laughs> uh, but, like, their, their, like, reality hits them and they're stuck working at one of their brother's uh, furniture rental shop. And that's, like, such a big con and everything. And it's just funny watching, like their antics and stuff it's, you know being on hbo they can go a little step further than normal shows can and i did also watch that little nas x video the latest one i think no. uh the song sounded good to me i heard it on tiktok and i was like man that's a cool song then i watched the video it is aggressively gay <laughs> aggressively like there there's some stuff there's some stuff going on in that video it was shocking at first sign me up <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know each, each their own that's cool but uh man i i there's an unrated ver- or uncensored version of that video and i did not watch that but <laughs> <laughs> I, I think there's gonna be a lot of uh, butt crack in that one. Like, you'll see a lot of stuff. These guys are really showing it. You know, <laughs> like, he's so gay that he might be straight. <laughs> you know, he, he's pushing it. Like, he, he's almost like a guy who's like throwing it so much in people's faces that it seems like no, he's not gay. He's just playing. He's he's <laughs> running with this. He's like, he's like nobody's that. Gay. Nobody's that gay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like straight guys who are like so anti-gay that they're gay. <laughs> He's the other way. He's so gay. That he, yeah. No, he can't be. <laughs> no man can have that much gay. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he go to like one of those like, uh, you know, fashion things like basically wearing a dress or something really like feminine or something? I mean, if you see his videos, he wears like nothing and pretty feminine stuff in there too. Like. I, I think he's very comfortable in that stuff. The only two things I know about him are that he that he's gay and that he did that what it, country road song yeah. or whatever. And that song, I how did that song become so popular? It's not good. It is know. not good. I never. I don't even think I ever heard the whole song. I don't know. I don't know if I heard the whole thing, but I heard enough to be like, this is not good. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know what people were thinking with that either. To be honest. I, it's sometimes like a fad or sometimes like it's just the times something that normally wouldn't work like works at that one specific time and you just can't put your finger on it you know? yeah there, there was a phase in the 70s where folk music was pretty big hmm. so although i i do think if if hell has a soundtrack it'll be collaborations between hip-hop and country stars <laughs> <laughs> i don't know those are the worst collaborations and, and and the theme song done solve mysteries. If, you ever, if you've ever worked retail in the Christmas time, oh, I did that once, and yeah, that's awful as well. Actually, my work has a Mariah Carey on loop. I think. Oh no, that's a painful one. Yeah, it's, it's, you're gonna hear that till. And I, 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 Mariah Carey has a great voice, but. Uh, and at Christmas is just going to be all you yeah. want for Christmas is me yeah. or whatever that song is called. That one that, comes around too. Yeah. That song you hear multiple times a day, even like that. Uh, I think she recorded it like what a couple of years ago, and she's just making bank off of it. So much money. I think it's supposedly like the highest selling like Christmas single of all time. I believe it. Yeah. 
Yeah, she had massive uh, success with that. Um, what about you? You been uh, watching anything of note? I'm pretty much caught up on Doom Patrol. There's a couple more episodes coming out. It's been been pretty solid. I watched um, the second season, Lock and Key. I don't know if we uh, you talked about it. Oh, you said it was better than the first. Yeah, it was. It was good. Hmm. I like that. I guess that was last week's. This week was Doom Patrol mostly. Mm -hmm. But yeah, solid. I didn't watch a ton this week, so I finished a couple episodes of Titan season three. I hadn't finished up, and man, like last week, I said like the writing was getting a little silly and goofy. <laughs> There's a scene I shit you not where a character dies, and then <laughs> a bunch of bats working in unison lift and fly his body away. I'm not shitting you. I'm like, what the fuck happened to this show? <laughs> Like, the first couple of seasons were pretty good. This season got so silly, and I was just like, God damn, who wrote this shit? Like, was there anybody with bat powers or abilities it's, to talk to So them? what's weird is, like, a bunch of bats come in, and then that character Beast Boy is there, mm -hmm. and he also turns into a bat, but, like, he shrinks down to the size of a small bat, and then him and all these other bats carry the body weight and like i guess you could say like oh somehow because he's a bat he he's working in hive mind with all these other bats but still it wouldn't be enough bats to lift a fucking human <laughs> it's insane <laughs> it's so stupid it's an unladen african swallow <laughs> so there's some spoilers for titan season three for those is, so is that a, a live action or is that a cartoon that's live action oh damn and man yeah it that's where their budget went. Huh? <laughs> and like I said, it's weird because like the first two seasons I thought were pretty solid. And, mm. But boy, this season went downhill writing wise. Um, I, I started Doom Patrol, but so far I've only had time to watch episode one. Yeah, I'm in the same place. <laughs> I got to start watching that show. I, I saw clips of it recently and uh, it looks good. And then the only other thing I watched is, I don't know if you guys remember this, but months ago, like when I was watching classic movies on HBO Max, like one of them I watched was this like uh, mystery called The Thin Man. And it, it's basically like uh, this married couple. It, it's kind of like a romantic comedy mixed with a murder mystery. And I, I liked the first one. And I found out there was a sequel. And so that was on the TCM uh, part of HBO Max. And this one was called After the Thin Man. And it even had Jimmy Stewart in it, even though I can't do his impression. Wait, was it Thin Man, a movie that you talked about that wasn't that good? No, I actually liked it. I was just kind of perplexed because, like, of why they called it The Thin Man. Because, uh, because, oh, that's like, right. Because, like, well, what's, what's weird is, so I watched that first movie, and I swear to God, at no point in that movie do they actually use the phrase The Thin Man. And then this movie, like this guy's a retired um, detective, but then he, you know, he gets drawn into another case. But he, 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 like he's swarmed by like, um, like the media kind of because he's kind of a celebrity because he was like this hotshot PI or whatever. And they're like, "Hey, if you get another Thin Man case, will you will you get back to, into it?" And I'm like. I swear to fucking God, they never said the Thin Man on the first movie. <laughs> I'm like, what Thin Man case? It's so weird. I don't know. Uh, I don't know where they got that title from, but uh, I enjoyed this as well. So, like, if you're in, in, in the mood for a classic black and white murder mystery, these Thin Man movies, I can uh, totally recommend. And, yeah, that, that was pretty much it. I wish I had... Uh, more but i just been uh, busy with work this week i haven't watched a ton um but oh uh did you hear about the um the QAnon people who were waiting for a jfk jr to show up <laughs> i did <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean. was it i heard jfk jr and then like some other like dead person too and i was oh like robin williams or someone i was like what the <laughs> fuck this is show up for what <laughs> so apparently they think that JFK Jr. is still alive and they went to some event where they were convinced he was going to show up. Yeah. Okay. And then when he didn't show up, there was an event like the next day that was a Rolling Stones concert. So they thought maybe he'll show up to that then. <laughs> you never know. How's Richard shows up. How yeah. is this QAnon thing still going? Didn't they basically 
like I want to say like months and months ago, like they found like this American that lives in Japan that they basically outed as kind of the guy that's made up a bunch of this shit. And like the guy behind the whole key thing, maybe I'm wrong about that. But. Yeah, I think they do know. Yeah, but yeah, I, yeah, oh, I didn't shit. know that was a, like a, an American in Japan or something. <laughs> I, I want to say that's true, but anyway, I mean, I don't know if if you're dumb enough to believe it, you deserve to <laughs> go to one of these events. <laughs> just wait. The thing just is, wait. like just, I, every day, like I hear stuff like this, I just get more faith that I could just build a, my own religion. Yeah, and it'd be fine. <laughs> yeah, like. I'm thinking making a cult is easier than you think. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think there's a lot of like young. There, there's a lot of people just they're waiting for the cult to find them. Exactly. Yeah. They're like, there, I, there I just need people. my cult to come along. There are people who are trying to join like a, a crusade. You know, like they want to be a part of like a you know something. Yeah, you just have to sell them something. Yeah. Man, you know what would be cool is if you looked a lot like JFK Jr. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Perfect. <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, <laughs> what did they expect to happen if he did show up? <laughs> he was supposed to make Trump president somehow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, the first thing I would be like is, how did you come back to life? That's amazing. <laughs> how do I do that? <laughs> well, I'm sure the conspiracy is that he was never dead. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Tupac. <laughs> <laughs> I, w- I want to just go to one of these people's houses and see, like, you know, the pictures with the string on the wall and s- see where it all leads, man. Uh, their brains are, yeah. they must be cloudy, I, I imagine. You, you got to get on the internet and go down the rabbit hole. Uh, I mean, you got to do some Alex Jones in. Even, even with the John F. Kennedy Jr., I was alive when he died. I remember it was a big deal. Like, yeah, it was like a plane wreck, right? Yeah, yeah. For like, I think a week or something, people were like mourning, like more than that, maybe people were mourning his loss and everything. It was a big deal. And like, these guys are just like, no, it didn't happen. And then what, like 20 something years later, he would break that just for Trump. <laughs> He'd be like, oh, you know what? <laughs> this guy right here. And he has some authority to do this. <laughs> yeah. And he had, <laughs> what, yeah. What well, was he going to be riding in like a, a white horse? And like, <laughs> you know? I don't get it. Craziness. Mm. All right, guys, should we get on with the show? Well, yep. we didn't go into this week's uh, happenings. Oh, oh, yeah, you mentioned this to me. So I've, I've got, I've got a short one and I've got a longer one. Okay, that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> the short one. Uh, some dude riding a bicycle blew me a kiss this week. Oh, nice. <laughs> so uh, that doesn't happen every day. <laughs> It'd be funny if he just ate shit after. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like, Good. I help you up, but man. I, uh, I think it's the locks, man. Like, you get attention. Yeah. Start, they're like, it's starting to work. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, it's a woman. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, babe. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I like them brought across the shoulders. <laughs> That's a Nordic lady right there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, number two, I was like, I was pulling some overtime and doing patrol, and uh, they called me like this about this guy who's like screaming at people. And I go and talk to him for a while, and he's 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 kind of calm, but obviously like not quite right. And like at some point, he goes back to screaming at people. Like he gets in front of the tram and makes them stop and wait for him while he screams at them. But like. Uh, there's this uh, short, stout uh, black woman. I'd say maybe like four eight. She's kind of short, and he's yelling "bitch" and all these like swears and stuff at her. And she leaves, and he's yelling at a bunch of other people. And so, like, um, at some point, well, he he like goes into like a restaurant establishment. I'm trying to get him out of there and a bunch of stuff. And like, we ended up calling the cops. But he goes outside, and this black woman comes back. With like a guy that's even shorter than her, <laughs> and they just she gets up in his face, and I'm like, he, he's kind of tall. He's like six foot, and like I don't want to deal with a six foot like crazy ass guy. Yeah. And she's getting in his face, and like then like the two of them, they just start kicking the shit out of him, and I'm like, whoa! I was like the the brass right here. I was like, this is uh, I'm a, I'm a kind of impressed, but then like. I actually had to like get in the middle and like keep them from like <laughs> kicking the shit out of him, and he was being the asshole. <laughs> but I was like, "Oh Jesus!" Yeah, you got. I mean, that's a bad situation because you know he's got problems. Yeah. But, you know, I I personally would just probably try not to confront them at all. You know, 
Like uh, <laughs> this will settle itself. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's just one of those things. I'll be like, yeah, oh, he'll he'll learn a lesson yeah. here. No good will come out of confronting yeah. anybody in that situation. But I actually like uh, the woman, the other guy. They were cool like afterwards because he the crazy guy took off across the street and they were like chill. <laughs> I was like, well, you know, you, you instigated, but we did call the cops, so you, you know, you might want to get out. Of here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, <laughs> just craziness. Oh boy, that's nuts. Oh, Portland, man. Uh, it's bad over here when it comes to the homeless. Like, I was watching uh, some videos and people were talking about how it's gotten worse over the years. And we've only, I've only been here for like four years, so I haven't seen it completely. Well, I guess like uh, when this mayor, uh, Ted Wheeler, like he, um, like basically, I guess they legalized camping on the street on the sidewalks, oh, okay. and it just exploded. And uh, house prices are insane too, though. Like last year, one a house that was like three hundred thirteen thousand is now like four hundred thirty six thousand. Yeah, it's crazy, and I keep thinking it's gonna crash. But um, well, Zillow just recently had a problem. Like they were buying up like a bunch of houses. Right, they had a deal where I guess they must have been flipping them, but they mm -hmm. were like. You know, if you don't want to list, you don't want to go through it, whatever, like, we'll buy your house on the spot, something like that. We'll give you an offer on the spot. And they bought all these properties, and then uh, I guess they decided it was a bad strategy, and now they're trying to offload a bunch of them again. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, uh, I guess that's good news. We just bought a house, so <laughs> that sucks for us. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Uh I don't. Well, we'll see what it does. It, it, the thing is, if you hold on long enough, it'll, the price will come back. But I do think they'll drop at some point. Mm. What you do is whatever house you want, you you pay some homeless guys to camp there until the property values go down. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, I saw. Uh, well, I have a real estate related story about that because um, I, I was trying to be a real estate agent for a while, and. Um, my client, they they brought me this property. I was looking. I was like, man, for the size and and everything it seems like a pretty good deal and the pictures even look decent and, and so we're, we go down there we're driving we're driving we're driving and then it turns out it's like right next to a um it's like a like a flop house like a not a flop house but there's like um like a shelter where they give people soup and shit mm. and like there's just so many people camping like all over there are people camping on the the property lawn and across the street is like, okay, I, I get it. Yeah. But I saw like a, a article and I didn't click into it and read it, but it said like Portland's looking into like <laughs> putting like um, homeless friendly sections in like little like, villages, like in all, well, like spread out in a bunch of different neighborhoods. I'm like, who in the fuck wants this? I know. It's like coming to a neighborhood near you. Like, <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, I don't know. Uh, yeah, get, look, I, I get them houses, get them, you know, that stuff. I, I think, you know, they need that because they probably have mental issues that aren't allowing them for, allowing for them to get them that stuff themselves. But uh, they, like, mental health, you know, we need to have people who are, like, actually working on that and getting the medication and, you know. Well, like, that guy, them. unless unless probably, like, the guy I was talking about, unless you have the power to just institutionalize people, like, it's probably not going to happen. But, like... Yeah, he definitely had drugs or, like, taking one too many knocks on the head or something. Like, he wasn't right. Hmm. But, yeah. But also, but I mean, they at the same time, they're dangerous to other people. It's it's not, they're not great to have around. Yeah, yeah, no. They, they live a dangerous life, man. Like, they kill each other out there, you know? Yeah, they have a lot of, like, yeah, internal, like, theft and fighting and issues like that, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> well, should we go on that pleasant topic and get into the show? <laughs> it's going to be one of those shows, isn't it? <laughs> well, for anyone who hasn't watched or, or listened, basically we just go around the table. Everyone's going to bring a, a random topic of conversation to the table. A lot of times we try to find uh, kind of weird or funny news stories, but we'll, we'll talk about just about anything. And as tradition dictates, AJ, we usually start with you. So what do you got for us this week? All right, this is a pretty bad first date. A man was left with an enormous bill when his blind date brought 23 members of her family with her to test his generosity. <laughs> I, I saw this headline once. So I didn't click on it. <laughs> However, uh, her rather bizarre tactic went well, uh, no, well and truly backfired. Unsurprisingly, when her date, known as Mr. Lou, 29, uh, did a runner. 
Okay, I guess that means you ran away. The uh, rather ambitious Singleton was left to foot the bill herself at a cool $3,100. She was less than pleased. The couple's date took place at a restaurant in eastern Chinese province of Zhejiang. According to the publication, it has been Mr. Liu's mom who had set up the meeting between uh, him and the girl. Uh, He had uh, a lack of a dating life. In a, in a hope to impress his date, Mr. Liu had agreed to pay for the meal, not realizing that her entire extended family would be joining them. The woman then explained to local media that she had wanted to test her date's generosity before committing to a relationship. Well, well success. Yeah, <laughs> you tested it. <laughs> While Mr. Liu was happy to pay for a small portion of, a, of the meal, he insisted that the woman and her family should be paying for their share, completely understandably. I mean, that's... How do you get 23 people to agree to that? Well, I mean, you just invite them say, hey, we're going to take you to dinner. And you just don't tell them? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, that's even worse. Like, yeah, yeah, okay, I guess that sounds good. But <laughs> um, what do you think is going to happen? I, I mean, personally, I, I wish, like, anyone I was dating, like, if they had that, like, under under the the current somewhere, that they would just bring out and test you, and you'd be like, oh, thank God, I dodged the bullet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> then you just died a dash and you never talk to her again. Yeah. I think she kind of helped him out there. <laughs> I mean, what would you guys think if this situation happened to you, but like they weren't trying to stick you with the bill, but at the same time, like her whole family was there? Like, like you just have to be around the family? Yeah. Yeah, I don't care. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, it seems I mean, I, I guess I would stick it out, but that'd be I, pretty I, awkward. I feel as well. like a little weird if they like sprung it on me, I guess. Like, you just show up and they're like, there's 50 people there. You're no, like, that's what uh, I mean. What if they sprung it on you? Like, would you, Well, I mean, what if they were like welcoming and cool, you know? That'd be, just, that'd be one like way. I just struggle being around people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like I, would, I would be 20 awkward. minutes in, I'd be like, oh, that was nice to meet you guys. I'm going <laughs> to... I, I, Recharge the I've got a smoking problem. <laughs> 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 I smoke a whole pack, so don't wait for me. <laughs> yeah, the fact that anyone would try this is is insane. And, like, what if he did pay for it? Then she'd be like, oh, this guy's an idiot. I'll- yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of like your uh, sugar babies. You see what you can get out of somebody. <laughs> uh, she was setting the tone for the relationship with that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Good. That was lucky. Lucky. I, I say it's lucky for him. Yeah. He, Get out, man. Yeah. He found out quick. Yeah. This isn't the one. <laughs> no dragging this one out. <laughs> and his mom really messed up. She set him up on that blind date, too. <laughs> Dang. Thanks, mom. You owe oh. me $3,000. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Should we go over to Manifesto Round One? Ah, so this is, this is, a, this is a gem here. A man accused of killing his daughter's boyfriend, who he claimed sold her to a sex trafficking ring. Heard about this, yeah. So, uh, this 19-year-old took his underage daughter, and I don't think it said her age. I think she was like 14 or something. I'm not sure. But But, uh, took her from Spokane to Seattle and, like, sold her to some sex traffickers. And so, like, her parents ended up going to Seattle and rescuing her. But that wasn't the end of the story. Like, the dad, I guess, is like 60. And so, like, he went and tracked this guy down. He found out where he was going to be at a certain time. He abducted him. And then, like, this happened, I think, like, back in August or something. The guy's been missing. But uh, they found his body, like, in the trunk of a car. And so the dad had, had well, allegedly <laughs> beaten him in the head with a cinder block and stabbed him to death. Damn. I was like, ah, a little of the old <laughs> vigilante justice. Now, yeah. <clears throat> question, was was the dad in this case, did he have an Irish accent, and did he have a particular set of skills? <laughs> because this sounds like a plot to take. <laughs> <laughs> Seen this movie. <laughs> but I, I don't know. I've got I've got a little soft spot for uh, vigilante justice sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sometimes like you hear a story like that, and you're like, eh, good on him. That guy had it coming. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, if I, they better hope I'm not on that jury, because that guy's going to walk. <laughs> 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 Be like, have a good one, dude. <laughs> Glad you got your daughter back. Mm. Yeah, that jury selection process. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah this guy, yeah. Man, I, I <laughs> Sounds can't. like a cool dude. Yeah, when they're vetting him, like, how do you feel about murdering somebody for, uh, <laughs> be like, oh, I, I, you should go to jail forever for that. And then be like, 
he's not going to jail. <laughs> I lied. You just pretend like you never even heard of the case. You're like, man, people commit murder the worst. Yeah. <laughs> murder is unacceptable in yeah. any case. The sin. And be like, I changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I don't, I don't understand. Like, how do people go through with something like that where they abduct a girl like that and sell her or force her into sex slavery? Like, I don't have that kind of heart, man. Yeah, I, have, yeah. I have too, like, I have a, almost too nice of a heart, you know, like detrimental. Well, I mean, there's like a, there's a certain number of psychopaths out there and they, they just have no, they man. just don't have like human feelings basically, so. Man. I, when I was a kid, I was always scared. Like, what if I end up like one of those people, you know, who's like a yeah. murderer and stuff? Man. No, it, it's, it's weird. Though, like, but yeah, like they just have no idea what like having having those feelings are like <clears throat> sociopaths yeah. yeah all right i got a a more uplifting one for you here morgue buried in filth after weenie cake shows up at office wait what <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a wait what yeah <laughs> morgue buried in filth after weenie cake shows up at the office uh, in the com- conference room at Macomb County Medical Examiner's office, a cape sh- uh, shaped like a black phallus popped up, and it's causing issues. One investigator says not only was the pastry obscene, but it underlined a, a protracted dilemma at the morgue that ultimately cost three staffers their jobs. According to a formal complaint, the morgue in Macomb County is buried in uh, furor involving gripes of all sorts. Wait, Macomb County? Macomb. <laughs> okay, I was like, this is starting to go off the rails already. <laughs> em- employees hung pornography in the office, bullied females who complained, mocked African Americans probing about deaths of loved ones, and for fun, Jeez. recently purchased in a cake frosted with male privates. They got a, a picture. <laughs> this is probably not the one they used, but <laughs> similar. <laughs> uh, this is dramatic reenactment. Yeah, that's a, a cake for little Nas X. <laughs> uh, the cake pushed one employee over the edge, leading her to file a complaint with the federal government. Last week, three female employees at the office were fired for supposed workplace misconduct that one staffer says went on for five years at least. And now the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission has a workplace dispute in their hands. That worker, a person of color and a death investigator, explained she long desired to report the vile behavior, however feared reprisal, so she remained silent. Then the pictorial cake came. (laughs) In an interview with the Free Press recently, the woman said, I was livid, furious actually. All these cities are on fire for the Black Lives Matter movement, and here's my staff eating a black penis cake as a joke. That really pushed me over the edge. Therefore, she filed a complaint with the Macomb County uh, and the EEOC. The official complaint says there has been an ongoing hostile work environment within the medical examiner's office since I have been here. The office culture is tainted with racism towards people of color. This was not only ignored by uh, managing personnel, but um, participated in by the supervising staff. Hmm. I mean... It's scary, like, how much law enforcement, like, has, like, ties to, you know, racial, racist kind of backgrounds, you know? Like, I saw a video of a, a cop with, like, a, a Nazi tattoo, mm. like, openly displayed on his forearm, you know? It's like, that shouldn't be allowed. Yeah. <laughs> Do a little more vetting. Than yeah. That. Man, I worked with a guy who had a bunch of those tattoos, and was like, like, we were in the well field, and that's some rough rough crew out there and like they made him go put on like long sleeve shirts and it's like you're not wearing that shit around you know yeah what he had like swastikas and shit yeah he had like ss and fucking iron crosses white power and just crazy <laughs> Jeez. Shit. but yeah he was reformed he said but he still oh, had all the tattoos no. <laughs> <laughs> man yeah. tattoos are hard to get rid of <laughs> Don't, don't they have like better technology these days like lasers that can they have the like, lasers multiple, like, but it takes a ton of treatments and it's really painful apparently uh, man on uh <laughs> if you ever watched um uh, it'd probably be easier just to give some of those blackout tattoos where they just go pure black everywhere <laughs> well uh, uh 
on your mom's house like they've revisited this one guy several times he was like a you know fan of uh insane clown posse <laughs> okay. and he got like this you know smiley face kind of jokery type like makeup tattoos. tattooed on his face when he was younger and drunk yeah and yeah he's been sharing like you know the laser treatments but he's already gone through a ton and like you can still see it Damn. so yeah it's it's a it's a long painful process to get rid of him yeah, I could never get a tattoo. I know, like five seconds later, I just hate it. Yeah, like, yeah, I'd I can't like to get more tattoos, but it's expensive. It's like, uh, yeah, a good one. Like, yeah, you, you, you a, don't want to get like a shitty one. Yeah, I've seen those shitty ones, man. They are yeah. bad. <laughs> I was watching some like cover up show, and they had this great guy come on, this like uh, old school like gay guy, and on his back he had like. This giant tattoo of like some sailor like full fisting like another dude. I was like, oh my god! I, I saw this <laughs> like, uh, like you can't walk around in public with that, really. <laughs> <laughs> I saw this one a uh, British reality show. I, I, it turned out later to be uh, they were fake. They were putting temporary tattoos on people, but um, this they showed on the show that this girl and her friend like decided to get her a tattoo. And her friend picked out the tattoo for her so she couldn't see it. Oh, yeah. And uh, it was a woman taking a sh- like squatting and taking a shit <laughs> on her back. <laughs> and when she saw it, she freaked out. She was like, yeah. what? <laughs> That's not a friend, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, can you turn this into someone who's, uh, what do they call that when they shake their ass? And, uh, twerking. Twerking. <laughs> but there was shit <laughs> falling out of her. Man, I haven't went there in a long time, but one time, like, remember, like, you used to go to that, like, epic fail, like, website? Oh, uh, yeah. And they just had, like, random pictures. And, like, this lady got, like, um, this, like, naked, like, anime chick, like, basically tattooed on her vag to where it, it would basically look like if you were having sex with her, you were also having sex with this almost, like, Child looking oh, like anime man. girl. I was like, that's, that's fucked up. That's yeah. fucked up. <laughs> I'm really trying to attract some really uh, creepy dudes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't worry, it's just a trap. <laughs> I'm working with the local law enforcement. <laughs> <laughs> You're about to have sex in that Chris Hansen guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what are you doing here today? <laughs> She has him tattooed on her back. <laughs> her cookie, her vagina is carrying a plate of cookies. <laughs> I'll be right there. <laughs> Man, you guys ever see like those like old school Japanese tattoos people get where they actually like, you know, dip the oh like the needles on a yeah, stage. and they like hammer it in right. with the needles. I was like, that looks uh, painful. <laughs> yeah. That's a little more of a uh, yeah, that's a ritual. Yeah. All right, AJ, are you ready for your second story sure, of the week? let's do it. All right, uh, let's try this one. A California man named Dylan got his debt under control thanks to an indigenous ingenious plan to spend $150 on unlimited meals at Six Flags Magic Mountain for a year. Yeah, this was crazy. This man got two meals a day and got rid of his debt, saved for a wedding, and bought a house in Los Angeles uh, f- according to Mel Magazine, you can pay around $150 for unlimited year-round access to Six Flags, which includes parking a, two meals a day. Uh, oh, parking two meals a day. Uh, if you if you time it right, you could get you could eat both lunch and dinner there every day, according to the report. Six, Pla- Six Flags offered a premium season dining pass, which allows visitors to enjoy lunch and dinner items, as well as a snack and unlimited drinks during every visit. Uh, on any regular opening day. Booze is not included. Dylan started saving in 2014 and bought his first, uh, when he bought his first pass, he says he's since eaten about 2,000 meals there. The cost per sitting is around 50 cents. That entire first year, I don't think I ever went to the grocery store. Uh, I timed it so I was able to get there during my lunch break, go back to work, then stop back for dinner on my way home. (laughs) He said starting out, uh, starting out, all the meals were not exactly healthy options, but that has changed over the years. Uh, still a lot of bad food. I mean, it's theme park food. You can't expect too much from them. But you can find options that aren't terrible, stuff like tri-tip sandwiches and vegan options like black bean burgers, meatless meat, uh, meatball subs. 
uh, now that he's married, Dylan says he'll only eat at Six Flags three to four times a week, only for lunch. <laughs> that is some dedication, man. He's been doing that for like seven years. I could never. Like, I got to get Chipotle like once a month, you know? <laughs> that's, when, that's when you take your girlfriend and her 23 employees <laughs> to lunch every day for a year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it would be cheaper to just buy season passes and take them there. <laughs> that's insane man the dedication though good for him but uh that seems like a pain in the ass <laughs> yeah that's like a, a loophole where it's like uh a... you gotta go all the way to six flags park walk all the way into the park you gotta go through the lines all that stuff i mean yeah I, I don't know how he got it all done in like an hour for his lunch break or whatever it was. Yeah, I man, I guess if you got a pass, you'd probably get in pretty quickly. I hope so. <laughs> Unless yeah. he was just scarfing it. Yeah, down. you're like, these hot dogs over here are really shitty. There's never a line. Yeah. <laughs> man, years and years ago, I, I saw one of those like, you know, daytime talk shows. And, and like the theme was just like people that are like super duper cheap, you know? Right. And like this one dad. Like, he would actually buy two-ply toilet paper and then sit and very carefully separate the plies this. and, like, roll them up on, you know, I'm like, that's, Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's like, you, you could have went and worked for an hour yeah. and, and bought twice as much toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, they're just, like, using a wad of that toilet paper yeah. and the fingers fucking going through it. They're take like, like, a whole wad. <laughs> Like a whole plot. Yeah. You're just using more of that one plot. Yeah, exactly. And I don't know what they're thinking. Like, you you end up spending that money if you buy enough cheap stuff anyway because you have to, like, replace it over and over again and get it fixed. And it's just not as good. You lose money, I feel like, when you buy less high-quality stuff. I don't know. Yeah, I buy, like, a $10 pair of Walmart shoes every, like, couple months. (laughs) (laughs) See, you buy some sixty dollars Adidas and you're good for like two years. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I guess it's manifesto round two already. Okay, super short and sweet. Uh in Texas. Which with Florida, Texas gets quite a few stories. Yeah. Uh this guy he goes out and uh he's drinking at the bar, or whatever, he comes home late and uh he gets in a fight with his wife. She takes out a gun and points it at her and says, Where do you want it? And, like, she ends up shooting him in the leg. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's <laughs> like, this is a healthy relationship. I probably worked with that guy. I think I might know who this was. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> hey, we need to tell stories about your coworker who dated that stripper who had some yeah, interesting... <laughs> that's, that's the one, man. <laughs> Like it's it was all drama all the time. Yeah, that's like that's when two narcissists like get together. Yeah, and they're just crazy as shit. I think maybe like on one of our first episodes, you told that story about the guy in the ring. Yeah. That's oh, okay. Him. That's yeah. the guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the guy in the ring. The X-ray was hilarious. The dude ate the ring, and then like he had this perfect X-ray of a ring like right in his guts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Okay, I got one for us. Couple win battle to name son Lucifer after resistance from the registrar. Um, a couple has pulled off naming their son Lucifer after disapproval from a registrar who tried to prevent them because it's on an, because it's an alias for the devil. After the registrar explained to Mandy and Dan Sheldon their son wouldn't succeed in life if he was named Lucifer, the couple filed an official complaint to the local council. Last week, the Sheldons went to register their four-month-old son at the council office following its uh, reopening after it closed due to COVID-19 lockdown. However, 37-year-old Mr. Sheldon claimed they were gobsmacked by the demeanor of the registrar, who allegedly told the pair to exit the room while they uh, confirmed if they were permitted to register the boy with a demonic title. Uh, We were really excited to go and get him registered, but the woman looked at us in utter disgust, said Dan. She told us he would never be able to get a job and that teachers wouldn't want to teach him. I tried to explain that we are not religious people, and Lucifer in Greek means light bringer and mourning. But she wouldn't listen. She even told us that it was illegal to name a child that in New Zealand and that maybe we could name him something else but refer to him as Lucifer at home. The UK 
has a handful of legal re, uh, restrictions intact for names. Uh, though in 2013, New Zealand added Lucifer to its list of prohibited names. Dan added, honestly, we just thought it was a nice name, a unique one. We didn't expect to get much grief about it. We apologize if they were uh, uh, offended, but it is the job of our registrars to advise in these matters, as sometimes people are not aware of certain meanings or associations around certain names. Derbyshire County Council told local mm -hmm. report reporters. Like, hey, Why aren't they apologizing? Hey, honey, like, I want to give our kid a unique name. You know what I've never heard? Adolf. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I that's still a popular name some places. I think Lucifer is probably safer than Adolf. <laughs> uh, I remember the story of, like, uh, a black guy who named, he had two sons, and he named one winner and one loser. Oh. And crazy. the guy named Loser, like, he became, like, a successful businessman, and the guy named Winner was, like, ended up in jail. <laughs> oh. It's because the, the loser had to feel like he had to make up for his he name. Like you know? a complex. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Give your kid a complex. <laughs> Watch him <laughs> straight to the top. <laughs> it, I didn't even know like it surprises me that like New Zealand would have you know, I don't know a ton about New Zealand, but I thought they were, you know, fairly free country. I wouldn't think they would ban names, especially like Lucifer. I could imagine some stuffy old lady sitting in some registrar's office like I mean, I can imagine it, but I, I can't imagine like you know, you know, modern countries like banning names. You know, yeah, what, that is weird. Wasn't there a thing like a couple years back where some like white trash couple named their kid Hitler? Yeah, they yeah. did. Yeah, they couldn't do it though because that was they they got their kid taken away from C, by CPS. Yeah. I think. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> they had like three kids that they were naming that stuff. They lost all of them. I'm pretty sure. And they're probably having more kids. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty big tip off that if you're trying to name your kids like intentionally terrible names like that, that you might want to look into that family. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you're probably drawing attention to yourself that you don't want. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Lucifer, I'm surprised they didn't know. I don't know. I mean, they, they were apologizing at the end like, oh, we didn't know it was a bad name. But I mean. But it sounds like they, you know, the headline yeah. says that they I'm sure won the right to religious. Do it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that registrar was just like it's stuffy religious old broad or something. Yeah. I'd be like, bitch, I don't care what you think. <laughs> yeah, because now Lucifer now I think has a more positive connotation because of the show. And That's like, true. That's a, yeah. Yeah. Like, have yeah. you seen the show, lady? <laughs> like, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if you met someone named Lucifer. Yeah, I wouldn't. Like, uh, That's fine. Old Beelzebub. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, yeah, kids are gonna. He's gonna have to run like one of those like apothecary stands or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kids would. Uh, kids would definitely give you the business if you were named Lucifer. Yeah. Although, if you're a guy, they would probably like try calling you Lucy for short or something. <laughs> oh yeah. Lucy. All right, AJ, story number three. All right, what will we go with this time? Here we go. How many babies is too many babies? How about more than a hundred? Moscow native Christina Osterk, 24, who welcomed 21 babies by surrogate in just one year, says she and her husband have previously discussed having more than 100 biological children. Uh, joining her in this ridiculous baby-making goal is hubby Gallup Osterk, 57, a millionaire hotel owner with whom she and her their growing family live in a three-story mansion in the popular tourist destination Batumi, known as the Las Vegas of the Black Sea. However, they've said they're going to put a pause on this goal while they, while their newly arrived children are still young. Better still, Osterk, who has a six-year-old daughter from a former relationship, insists she's still a hands-on mother despite spending $115,000 CAN, I guess Canadian dollars, every 12 months on 16 live-in nannies. God damn. I'm the I'm the kid I'm with the kids all the time doing all the things that moms normally do. Uh, she said the couples use surrogate mothers because Wait, they that's like that's like nothing. What? The money? Sixteen living nannies. One hundred and fifteen thousand every twelve months. Yeah, that's like ten thousand a woman. Yeah, they're not paying much, are they? They're living nannies. Though. So I mean, living nannies, you know, like their I salary. I mean, I guess you get food and board, yeah. maybe. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can tell you one thing: my days are number. My days are never boring. Uh, each her days are numbered though. Each day 
is different from planning staff schedules to shopping for my family. Oster, who spends around $6,800 Canadian, uh, CAN, I don't know what that is, weekly on such essentials as 20 large bags of diapers and 53 packs of human or baby formula, uh, told Instagram Q&A that during the week, the children eat separately from their parents as dad gets home late from work. Her Instagram uh, account has 172,000 followers. Uh, I think it probably has more to do with the Instagram <laughs> than anything because what? <laughs> uh, I mean, it's it's interesting, I guess. If you can support them, though, I, I mean, I don't know. They're supporting them for now, but but like these kids are gonna have like more of a relationship with the nannies because like how much one-on-one time can they all get with their parents exactly she's acting like she's like mother of the year right now but she's got 16 nannies who are raising these kids yeah and these are like 20 something kids so she's still got like 75 more to go and that'll take a fortune to raise yeah they're trying to like Take over the whole country with <laughs> having so many yeah, kids. Yeah, you'd be like, oh, I've got like a thousand grandkids. Yeah, they're starting, they will. They're starting an army. They are taking over. This was in like Russia somewhere. Uh, yeah, yeah, in uh, what was that place called? The Vegas well, of the Black Sea. Yeah, the Vegas <laughs> of the Black Sea. So somewhere in Eastern Europe, but they sound like Russian names. So I don't know. Yeah, that's nuts, man. Way too many kids. Yeah, I mean, just adopt, you know? Like, you could give so many kids a better life, you know, who are already in a bad situation. I don't know why they have to be biologically yours. You already have your own kids. I mean, I've heard of those, like, Mormon families with the guy with multiple wives having an insane amount of kids. But that makes more sense because you got, you know, multiple moms built into the equation. Here, they're hiring surrogates to, like, (laughs) push them out. Yeah, that's, that's crazy, man. All right, I guess we're to Manifesto round three. Uh, this is another, uh, just a, a short one. But uh, so Biden was going to the uh, the climate festival. I don't know what it's called. Climate. Paris Climate? Something, whatever. Oh, was it wasn't in Paris, was it? It was in uh, Glasgow, I think. Oh. But um, I, I think this is related to that. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. But uh, anyway, uh, so their motorcade is like going kind of like through some back roads or something. And, like, they passed, like, this gigantic Scottish dude standing naked in a window taking pictures. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like, that's nice. <laughs> how, how, how do people even know about that? <laughs> they took pictures of him? Well, I, I guess they must be talking about it because I, <laughs> it is kind of a story. Just like, oh, sorry, Mr. President. <laughs> it's funny. But, uh. Yeah, some fat bastard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, speaking of that, also, this is like a side note on that. <laughs> like, I was, for whatever reason, some like pictures from the conference popped up, but it's all like different like world leaders like s- sleeping. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that sounds about right. Really concerned about the environment. <laughs> I just saw some like tweet about it where they were like um saying that like they all like threw a coin or something in this like fountain or something to like uh pledge to like get the climate under control by 2050 or something and someone just tweeted like yeah we're fucked or something. <laughs> like that. Yeah. yeah, I mean it I'm sure nothing good came out of it. Yeah. Like China and Russia didn't even show up, so <laughs> they're like we're not helping. Yeah. It's like well, we'll do it without you. Oh, no, wait. No, that's not um, that's not possible. We won't even try. <laughs> I don't think we're going to try. That is the tricky thing about climate is like even if you get a lot of countries on board like if like some of the major ones like China or India or whatever like aren't, aren't on board, then it's like so many people, you know. I I mean I think what's really going to be is nuclear. Uh, there's so <laughs> much energy in nuclear. It's, it's yeah, everybody's going towards it. it yeah, seems like. I, I I think opinions shifting a little bit. But yeah, I know Buffett and Bill Gates are planning on building one in Wyoming. So I don't know. I I, I think it'll loosen up. I think China's building a lot of those, like, for other countries, too. Like, they're going out there and, like, selling them. Possibly. I, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I could definitely see China undertaking it. 
because mm. they have so much central control. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. All right. This headline caught my eye. Uh, teacher convicted of dumping liquid nitrogen on a student's groin. Oh. A teacher uh, from Illinois suspected of burning a pupil in class with liquid nitrogen has been found guilty, according to officials. Gary Broderson, a former Bartlett High School chemistry teacher, was convicted Friday of endangering the health of a child and reckless conduct. According to the DePage County State's Attorney's Office, in May of 2018, 66-year-old Broderson dumped liquid nitrogen on a student's groin area and chest while conducting a science demonstration. The liquid burned the student's finger and groin, officials say. Obtained footage displays a, uh, a student in a classroom lying on the floor as a man d- decants a substance. Uh, a spokesman for the state's attorney's office said the teenager had volunteered to participate in the science demo, though did so with the discernment that the liquid nitrogen would be spilled over his chest area, not his private parts. Back in 2018, a student at the high school told the local news reporters a small amount was meant to be poured on his chest. He poured all of it on him, and it instantly burned him. For four hours, a jury deliberated prior to finding the ex-teacher guilty of two misdemeanor charges. According to reports, after learning of the incident, the school district placed Broderson on administrative leave, and roughly two months later, he resigned. Broderson is due in court again on March 18th for sentencing or post-trial motions. According to the news outlets, uh, the spokesman said that the student has since amply recovered. But I'm like, even if it was like a total accident, like what was this teacher thinking? Yeah, that's a way... I mean, chemistry teachers do like to do crazy uh, shows, but uh, that's uh, you're definitely taking some safety risks there. <laughs> I mean, even if he just, like, did dump a small amount on the kid's chest, he would still be, you know, yeah. taking a risk of burning. And, like, I'm like, what was the point of the experiment? Yeah. <laughs> like, this burns, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, it's a bad judgment. That's one of those, like, here, smell this kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, like, just, yeah, terrible judgment. Like... Hopefully, it was uh, the student was a real piece of shit. Yeah, that's, that's the only thing you can hope. Oops, easy. <laughs> I was gonna say uh, the teacher was getting revenge because the student was cheating on him. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe the maybe the teacher like was hoping that that guy would volunteer. He's like, <laughs> I got you, or now that he did volunteer, he's like, all right, I got him. <laughs> yeah, finally, <laughs> I'm put a little more liquid nitrogen in this class. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Sorry, Brad. <laughs> it's like why would you even be holding like a substantial amount <laughs> like if you were going to pour a little bit why would you hold like a, a large amount over somebody mm-hmm. it's like, the whole thing makes it's, no yeah, sense it's crazy <laughs> man we've done a lot of stories but we, we still got more time AJ you got anything else for us yeah sure uh, I got one last short little story but uh, let's see here all right uh, Dr. Anthony Yuan, a plastic surgeon, popular YouTuber, said that an eight old rumor was actually true. Uh, I'll get into it in the story. A surgeon and TikTok star has realized, uh, revealed that there is a surprising connection between the size of a man's nose and his penis length, proving that age old rumors are true. Dr. Anthony Yuan, a plastic surgeon and social media star, explained that a study found that those with larger noses have an average penile length of 5.3 inches while those with shorter noses will sit around 4.1 inches sharing that knowledge with his 7.1 million tiktok followers he also included that neither of those are like average size (laughs) yeah that's the weird thing i don't know Uh, height of body weight but actually before birth as a result well let me read this include that penile length may not be determined by age height or body weight but actually before birth Mm. uh in a bid to help comfort those who may now be feeling less felt self-conscious of their genitals he confirmed he confirmed that this means marvels the hulk will in fact have a tiny wee wee no, I think he has a big dick. <laughs> I can't think of the Hulk. I mean, even if Bruce dick. Banner has a small dick, wouldn't Hulk like Hulk up his dick yeah. and have like a pretty big one? Yeah, I would think Hulk would probably be okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Thor saw it and he couldn't get it out of his head. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> they should have like a um, 
like a sex hulk that hulks out when he's horny rather than angry. <laughs> <laughs> you would murder people. <laughs> yeah, that sounds awful. Yeah. <laughs> like, how does Superman get, like, Lois Lane pregnant, you know? Like, just one little miscalculation and boom, she's broken into a bunch of pieces. <laughs> he has a uh, very fine control. Yeah. I don't think the Hulk has that kind of control. <laughs> <laughs> Hulk smash. Hulk smash. <laughs> Hulk smash indeed. <laughs> Man, now I just want to see that. <laughs> I'm just saying that's big. That's good news for us big nose people. We get the advertising, you know. <laughs> you gotta yeah. go get some rhinoplasty. Get that big nose. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go get a, a nose job. Look like that Steve Martin and that Roxanne. <laughs> Uh, Ladies, hmm. if my dick don't work, I can fuck you with my nose. <laughs> <laughs> All right, manifesto. Okay, in Australia, a four-year-old went missing. She was uh, stolen from her tent, and she was in there with like uh, another infant. And so, like eighteen days later, like the police broke into a house, and she was in there just fine. She's like, oh, "Hi, I'm Cleo." But uh, apparently they offered like a million dollar reward for leads and stuff. And somebody had called in and said, you, you know, my, my neighbor's kind of weird or whatever. But like when they showed up, he wasn't even there. And But they arrested him later. But I was like, you know, that's lucky. Because she was gone for like three weeks. So that was his house that they... Yeah, it was like... It, it was a good lead, I guess, but yeah. he wasn't there when they broke in. Was that probable cause enough to be like, hey, my neighbor's a weirdo. You might want to check this out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know if they were looking at windows or if they heard something. or, But, uh, yeah, it said they broke in, so. Hmm. Yeah, that was pretty lucky. If you're a weird neighbor, just be quiet so people don't know you're weird. <laughs> also, if you're going to, like, abduct a child, don't do it near your house, right? Oh, yeah, that's true, too. The more you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I only got one more story, but luckily we're getting we're getting close to time here. Um, lady chased kids with her car before hitting nine year old with taser. A nine year old victim of a taser attack claimed for four seconds it felt like he was being uh, tased as neighbors nearby heard him shout in pain. Police in Riverton announced on Wednesday that 37-year-old April Shirtleff had been detained um, for investigation of two counts of making a threat of violence, two counts of aggravated assault, and two counts of child abuse. On October 2nd, um, a 10-year-old boy and his 9-year-old uh, pal were in a church parking lot riding scooters. According to a police affidavit, uh, as the boys played in the lot, a vehicle pulled in, parked, and a female who was driving uh, was horizontally holding her phone, potentially filming them. The affidavit states the children feeling awkward left to go to an adjacent park. They came back a short time uh, later with hopes the vehicle would be gone. However, it was still there. That's when her son walked up to the car, according to Kelly Wright Green, the mother of the nine-year-old uh, boy. Um, she said, my son is not shy. So he walked up to the car and said, what are you doing? Why are you taking pictures? That's when the lady rolled her window down, waved her taser and blurted, I'm going to fucking tase you. Both boys started riding away on their scooters, though the woman began backing her vehicle out of the stall and driving toward the boy at a high rate of speed. Uh, a scaredy was going to be struck by the vehicle. One boy left his scooter and commenced running. Shirtlift then uh, exited the vehicle and ran after the child. The affidavit adds she eventually caught up to him, reached her arm uh, from behind, and placed the taser on the boy's chest, uh, activating the taser for what the boy described as about four seconds. The boy began screaming and crying, and the female quickly got in her vehicle and drove away. Now, obviously, like, this lady's, like, fucked up, but I do also have the feeling that, like, the mom's believing her son was all, like, nice about it he probably said like something shitty to yeah, the lady possibly. she obviously overreacted yeah. to a insane degree <laughs> but i'm betting that boy said something like you know dickish to her yeah i can see that too but she was wrong <laughs> 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 God, 
God, a nine-year-old? I mean, yeah, they say whatever they want, you know? Just let them. I don't know. That's messed up. Because <laughs> Liam's like eight. You know? Yeah. No, he's nine now. I, I start forgetting because they like... He's nine. They start flipping back and forth. And <laughs> I'm like, they're one year apart. They're two years apart. They're one year apart. They're two years apart. <laughs> 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 But uh, but yeah, this will have been man. She ha- she must have been having a day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But her, her initial behavior was weird too, though. It was just sitting there and I mean, she showed up at a church parking lot and did this. <laughs> yeah, like who knows if she was actually filming them or if she was filming something else or maybe she was just like a Karen. And she was like, "These kids are up to no good." Right. Yeah. <laughs> there are people who just hate kids, especially teenagers. I don't. These kids were younger, but still, there are people who just hate kids. On that note, <laughs> <laughs> if you hate kids, or even if you like them, we thank you <laughs> for like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> yeah, comment on how much you hate kids. Uh, no, but anyone watching, thank you very much. Uh, anyone listening as well, uh, make sure to, if you will, uh, you know, go to YouTube, subscribe, like our videos. Or if you're listening on podcast feeds, uh, subscribe, write positive five-star review, all that good stuff. And why the hell not follow us on Twitter and have some fun there? Guys, where can people find you on the Twitter? I am at a name for uh, I am at a name for this too, the number two. At unsolicited S-U-G. And you can find me at Zach Jones Live. That's Z-A-C-H-J-O-N-E-S-L-I-V-E. And that is going to do it for all of our shenanigans and poppycock this week. Please, please, please tune in again next week. Bye, guys. Take care. Have a good one.